In this video, I'm going to share my favorite number that's over a million. This is part of the hashtag where a lot of different math YouTubers are just sharing really cool, very large numbers. I'll leave a link to the playlist down in the description where you can check out everybody else's videos and they're really cool, so I'd encourage you to check them out. Now, what I'm going to talk about in this video is extremely large prime numbers. We know that there are infinitely many prime numbers. Indeed, I have a video on that that you could check out proving that there's infinitely many prime numbers. It's kind of a cool video. So, that means there isn't a largest prime number, but there is a largest prime number that is currently discovered. It's the biggest one that humanity has ever found yet. So the real goal of this video is more asking, how do we find extremely large prime numbers? Well, one way to do this is to focus on a specific class of prime numbers called Mersenne primes. Mersenne primes are numbers that look like 2 to the power of something minus 1. That is, if you start with a prime number p, then 2 to the p minus 1 is just some much, much, much larger number. If p is really big, then 2 to the p is just unfathomably large, as it's an exponential function. The p here is a prime number, and we'll talk about why in a moment. So basically what you're doing is if you have one prime number p, you can take 2 to the power of that minus 1 and get an exponentially larger possible prime number. Now, it's very important that I say possible prime number here. For example, let me compute out the first few Mersenne primes. So if I plug in p equal to 2, 2 squared minus 1 is 3. If I plug in p equal to 3, I get 7. If I plug in p equal to 5, I get 31. And 3 and 7 and 31 are all prime numbers. So these Mersenne numbers that I get out from inputting these different primes give me a new larger prime. But what happens if I go to m11? 11 is a prime number, yet 2 to the 11 minus 1 is 2047, and that is a composite number. It is 23 times 89. And so what this means is, if I start with a prime p, the Mersenne number associated to that prime p may be prime, or it may not be. We have to do some further tests to figure it out. So just because you can compute 2 to the p minus 1 doesn't necessarily mean that you get a prime. It gives you a candidate that might be prime. In fact, there's a lot we don't know. For instance, we don't know whether there's infinitely many Mersenne primes out there. Yet nevertheless, Mersenne primes are really good candidates to find extremely large prime numbers. Now, I will note that in this formula, p here was thought of as a prime number. But what if it was composite? What if it was the Mersenne number associated with a composite in a times a b? Well, it turns out that there's a funky little algebraic trick. You can actually factor this. So if you input a composite number, you get a composite number out. And so that means we really just want to focus on prime numbers as being the inputs p. And then we're going to analyze is 2 to the p minus 1 prime or composite. Okay, so what is the largest such Mersenne prime that we've discovered? It turns out to be the Mersenne prime associated with p being about 82 million. And this has been confirmed to be prime. It is the largest Mersenne prime. In fact, it's not just the largest Mersenne prime. It is the largest prime number that humanity has ever discovered. This was discovered back in 2018, and from 2018 to the time of this video, which is September 1st of 2020, there has not been a larger Mersenne prime discovered, or in fact, a larger prime of any nature. Now, this number is absolutely enormous. To just write it out would take over 24 million decimal places. It's just unfathomably large. But nevertheless, we've proven that there must be larger prime numbers, even though we haven't discovered them yet. And it turns out that Mersenne primes are so useful for this process of figuring out really, really large prime numbers that the last seven largest prime numbers that humanity has discovered, every one of them has been a Mersenne prime. Now, Mersenne primes are useful for discovering extremely large prime numbers for more than just the fact that they're a candidate to be considered as a prime. Because one of the biggest problems is finding out, well, you've got your big number, is it prime or is it composite? And indeed, Mersenne primes have a special trick. There is something called the Lucas-Lemmer primality test. This test 
makes it easier to discover whether a Mersenne number is prime or composite than it does for just a generic extremely large number. And the reason why a test is really nice is that the other methods for seeing whether a number is prime or composite are just really slow. They're computationally expensive. For example, imagine you want to prove that 31 is a prime. One way that you could test whether 31 is a prime is just to divide out by a bunch of the prime factors. It's not divisible by 2 or 3 or 5 and so on. And in fact, you could test all the numbers up to square root of that number. The square root is relevant because if it was the square root times the square root, that would give you the original value and that would be composite. And then if it went beyond the square root, it had to be multiplied by something less than the square root to get up to the number, and you'd already tested those. So in the case of testing for whether 31 is prime, we don't have to bother dividing it up by 7 because 7 squared is 49. That's just bigger than 31. And that method works fine for small numbers like 31. But if you have a number with 24 million decimal places, dividing by all the primes up to the square root of that number is going to be extremely computationally expensive. It's a slow, cumbersome process. And for Mersenne primes, the fact that we have a faster method makes it extremely nice for discovering these very large primes. So what is this test? Well, it starts with a sequence. So I have a new sequence, I'm going to call it SI. The zeroth term, when I equal to zero, is just the number four, so it's starting at four. And then, and then this is recursively defined such that for i bigger than zero, SI is just defined to be SI minus one, the previous term, squared minus two. For example, the first few terms of this sequence is, well, S0 was 4, but then S1 is going to be 4 squared, which is 16, minus 2, which is 14, S2 is 194, and so on. Okay, so then here's the test. You get this big sequence. The claim, then, is that the Mersenne number MP, it is prime if and only if the term of the sequence SP minus 2 is just some integer multiple of that Mersenne number. As in, you take your sp minus 2, this term in the sequence, and you say, well, is it like 3 times or 4 times or 5 times the Mersenne number that you computed? Now, remember, for us, our p was some number like 87 million. So the sequence has 87 million terms in it. It's still extremely computationally expensive. The terms become unfathomably large because every single time you're squaring it, and then subtracting 2, but the squares make it really, really large. And then there's a computationally expensive test to see, is this unfathomably large number actually just a multiple of the Mersenne number, the MP, which itself is, again, an unfathomably large number with 24 million decimal places. So this is by no means a cheap computation. But it is cheaper than the other methods, and that's what makes it so powerful. It is cheaper, computationally speaking, to verify whether a Mersenne number is prime or composite than it is a generic number of roughly the same size. And it's for this reason that searching for Mersenne primes is an excellent way to find extremely large prime numbers, and indeed why seven of the last prime numbers that we've discovered have all been Mersenne primes. Indeed, this project is one that you could even get started on yourself. It's called the Great Internet Mersenne Prime Search, and you can run software on your computer to help humanity discover larger and larger prime numbers. So hopefully, this video is going to become obsolete. That the number that I chose, the currently largest discovered prime number, will in the future not be the largest number that humanity has done. Maybe the second, or the third, or the millionth large number, I don't know. But the point is, there has to be more, as we've proven that there are infinitely prime numbers, and it is up to us to discover some more. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. Definitely check out the playlist down in the description to see all of the other math YouTubers who have made videos on these enormous numbers over a million. There's so many cool examples. Definitely check them out. Give this video a like for the YouTube algorithm, and we'll do some more math in the next video.